like a cup of tea? No, thank you. Please, sit down. Thank you. I just thought I'd have a word with you. I know we've been through it already, but it sometimes helps to have another go. Something useful might come of it. After the first awful moments when everybody's too affected to be able to think straight. It's about this phone call, about uh, a week before it happened. You'd been transferred from Queensland, I understand. You were staying with your parents until you found this place. That's right. Now, did your father ever mention, say, um, a strange name or anything at all out of the ordinary? After the phone call, I mean. What phone call? You don't know about it. No, Sergeant. But you must know. This morning, your mother called us. My mother? Yeah. She told us about the phone call and uh, your father's fear after it. Now we'd wake up in the middle of the night and start checking the locks on the doors and the catch. Sergeant Mackay, hmm. there's something I think you should know. Can you spare us a few moments, please? You jokers are selling something the boss ain't here. We're police from Russell Street. Homicide. Sorry. This is Detective Barnes. Senior Detective Patterson. Oh, yeah. we be here about that abbot, Johnny Comagio. Eh? And what's your name? Foster, Bruce Foster. Uh -huh. I believe there was a dance here last night. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's Friday in the month, the Young Farmers Club. Did you go? Oh, I usually do. Not last night, though. We're spotlighting instead. Why was that? I don't know. Change of scenery, I suppose. Now, my mate, Neil Thomas, he had a fight with his girlfriend. Who's she? My sister, Sally. I see, so he went spotlighting instead. Yeah, that's right. We've spoken to half a dozen people so far this morning and say they saw you at the dance last night. Oh, yeah, they would have. <laughs> See, later on, the moon came up. It's no good for spotlighting, so we turned it in. Called in at the dance on the way home. For how long did you stay? Oh, about ten minutes. About what time was this? Ten thirty, yeah. Uh -huh. What did you do? Oh, yarned a few of the blokes and then went home. Did you see Johnny Kamaji? Well, just a glimpse, not to speak to or anything. Was there any sort of a uh, fight or a commotion while you were at the dance? No, nothing. <laughs> that plaster on your face, uh, have some sort of accident? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I spanished it when I was working underneath this thing. You know, sort of thing you're always doing. Mm. I suppose your, uh, your mate, uh, Neil Thomas, will be able to verify what you told us. Yeah, sure. That's right, we only called him for a look. And what did you see when you uh, called in for a look? How do you mean? You know how I mean. You saw... You both saw your sister Sally with Johnny Kamaji. You deny that. See it yourself. What did you think of Johnny Kamaji as your sister's boyfriend? That question's a bit theoretical, isn't it? I don't know. It depends how you look at it. No, I wouldn't have liked it. Then I didn't kill him either, if that's what you're getting around to. Now, why didn't you and Neil go to the dance, Bruce? I've already told you. Tell me again. Of course, he and Sally had a blue. What about? Don't know. It was about Johnny Kamaji, wasn't it? If you say so. Only Neil didn't kill him either. How do you know? Because we were home by half past ten. Neil stayed the night at my place. Now, why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> he didn't ask. That's right. Well, it's a blind. He's trying to get out of it. Why would Sam Nugget attack his own nephew? Everyone knows they had a row, because Johnny wouldn't give him any money for grog. You jumped Johnny Kamaji, Bruce. You and Neil Thomas. You followed him and your sister out from the dance. Then you jumped him. Oh, Johnny could handle himself, all right. But it was two against one. Well, what about Sam? He was there. He tried to help Johnny. He clobbered Neil with a bottle. Is that how it happened? Yes, that's right. Except for one thing. What's that? Why we did it. Well, we know why you did it. No, you don't. It was... It was because Johnny Comagi was trying to rape my sister. Go on. Well, that's it. I mean, they were there on the riverbank. He had it down and... Well, what do you expect us to do? Well, why didn't you tell us about this in the first place? I promised my father he wouldn't. Look bad for Sally. Hello. Lyle, help me. For God's sake, help me. Carol? Carol, is that you? Please find out. Something's gone wrong. 
Owen? Oh, Owen Dempster? Why? Carol? Carol? Carol, are you there? Carol? What's happened? Carol? Do you know the name? Well, yeah, I know of Lyle Revell. He's a member of the Pistol Club. Does he own a Colt Automatic? Well, he used to. He used to? Well, I thought he'd flogged it about, oh, just before he went to England, about four years ago. Don't shoot! Please, please don't shoot! Don't shoot! I'll pay you all the money you like! I've come to pay you, Morris, for Carol. Carol? George Flack? Right first time, Papa. Oh, uh, this is William Aspinall. Willie, this is George Flack, son of Harry Flack, deceased. What do you want to see me about? Well, I wanted to uh, invoke memories, George, of your father. Which one? Well, your real father, Harry, deceased. Yeah, why? Oh, you never knew him. He died. Tragic it was before you was born. But you ever thought about him, George? Ever wondered the kind of man your father was? Mum always said he was scum. Ah, oh, women. They forget so easily. Oh, not saying anything against your mother, George. Not at all. But she is a woman and they do forget. She don't forget. She's still got this bent finger where he broke it on her. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a happy marriage, Harry told me. But, you know, one day he come to me and he said, Bert, I'm the luckiest man alive. Mary's duffed. I'm gonna get me a son. Yeah. Bertie used to say to me, there's something sacred about having a son. The old liar, huh? What? Well, Mum said when she was seven months gone with me, he laid her out cold and then he kicked her. <laughs> the old liar, huh? Now, look, is this all you wanted to do? Yeah, about the old days? I was told it was something of vital necessity. Jackie Kelso, had a man that killed your father. You know what? They let him out. Yeah? He's living just down the street, a couple of doors away. Yeah? Just down the street. I've always said you'd like to shake his hand. Well, you don't know how it was, George, before they caught him, put him away. You don't know how it was in the street here. Everybody dead scared of him, working for him, doing what he wanted. Well, there was one bloke Kelso had doing his gardening for him. And when Kelso thought he hadn't done it right, he'd make him get down on his hands and knees and, and cut the grass again with his teeth. Well, now he's back trying to do the same. <laughs> you know what else he's saying, George? I took Harry Flack. I can take his son. You know about horses, George? You know, the stallion tends his herd, but then he gets old and the young stallion comes along. Well, now, you'd think the stallion would know he was old, but he don't. He has to be shown. And the young stallion always wins. Now, the people in this street, George, they need help. They need saving. Yeah, a saviour. That's it, George. A saviour like the Lord above. Mr. Kelso, sir, my name is George Flack. That name mean nothing to you? You killed my daddy. I'm sorry. He kills my daddy and he says he's sorry. Yes, I can accept that. Mr. Kelsa, sir. Why? I don't remember. Mr. Kelso, sir. Mr. Kelso, sir? 
Kurosawa's dropped his guts. Riding round, eh? From eight until midnight. Yeah. What do you do, riding round? Look at things. What sort of things? Just things. You do this often? What? Riding around at night alone. Quite often. You're not a sex pervert, eh? <laughs> you like watching people, couples? No, I'm not like that. How often do you ride around alone at night? For four hours. Not often. Quite often, you said. Isn't that right? That's right. How often? Any sex attacks last night? One. Jarding Creek. Couple in a car. Got a description of the attacker? I got it here. All right, senior. I'll take over. Right, Sergeant. What are you doing? Uh, checking the description. Mm. Here it is. Mm. Thanks. Oh, stay there. Stand up. Straight. Sit down. You know, if Kelso had murdered my father, you know what I'd have done? What? Probably the same as you. My father and I were very close. Do you know Jardine Creek at all? No, I've never been there. I'm definite about that. Mm. How old were you when your father died? I, 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 was, I was born two months later. You never had a father. Oh, Mum remarried. No, it's not the same, though, is it? Stepfather. No, no, I don't suppose it is. But perhaps there's a boy fishing. What? Jardine Creek. No, I've never been there. I had a got him. Got him in the end. Who? John Kelso. Oh, he's a bad one. Not worth wasting time on. Give us a look at your hands. What? Your hands. I want to see your hands. They're soft. What? Your hands. They're soft. You keep them soft. No, I... Now, what was it? Kelso or Jardine Creek? Kelso! You did him over? Yes. You sure about that? Yes, yes. All right. That's it. Get his statement. Charge him. Get their numbers, mate. Young man? I'm speaking to you, young man. That's better. A few men has never hurt anyone. I, I hope you got their numbers. Madam, if we hadn't... Been... All morning they've been here, rowing those bikes, disturbing the whole neighborhood, terrorizing people. A decent woman didn't step out of her own house. Yes, madam. You should have rung the police. Should have? Of course I did. That's why you... Well, I think it's a disgrace. I send for the police and all they do is... Anyway, I demand that something be done about it. Yes, madam, something will be done. Now, if you'll excuse me. Looks like Poots feel unavailable. What the hell's that supposed to mean? You know, she's got no bloke now. Can't blame her for looking for a new one, I suppose. Him? You're kidding. Never know. Oh, come on, stop trying to stir me. Poots knows where she stands. Is the ring gone? She passes down the line? Maybe. No, maybe about it. Even Ringo had his problems with Pud. Maybe she's tired of the mob. This is the, the mob that Ringo used to knock around with, isn't it? The business outside the Gleason's this morning, uh, did that have anything to do with Ringo's death? Uh, don't go. Trying to find yourself a bird, mate. <laughs> it 
could be. Yeah, well, that shouldn't be too hard for a nice, clean-cut young fellow like yourself. Nice square set of threads. Old school tie. Hey, watch it, will you? You're too smart for us, fella. We don't like smart guys around here. Get out of the way, Put. Smart boy needs to be taught a lesson. Gecko! Get out of the way, Put! He's fuzz! Come on, Gecko, give me one. Can you hear him? He's fuzz. You chicken? You're the one who wants to take over from Ringo? Well, show us how good you are. Yeah, come on, Gecko, you show them. Show them how tough you are with a bike chair. Shut, Shut up! Come on, you be the sucker. Shut up! Gecko, put the chain away. It's not too late. Yeah, Gecko, put the chain away. Be a gutless one. Shut! Sh All right, cop, try something. Right. Come on, get up! Yeah, come on, let's have a bit of fun before we run you in. Right, now, you stay there, I'm ready for you. Now then, one at a time, license is on the table. You can't do that. You'll get them back and then you can get out. Come on, beat it! Hold that feet. Why worry? We've got all the information we need. Oh, yeah, like hell you have. There's a hard case, this one. Now listen, friend. Five minutes ago, you were ready to get stuck into me with a bike chain, so I'm not feeling very gentle. And we want information, and you're going to give it to us. Maybe I can tell you. Shut your mouth. What do you want to know? A few things about the boy you called Ringo. Nothing. Tell him nothing. Did you make a deal? I think I can tell you a few things that might be useful. What sort of deal? Let him off the hook. Well, you're the one he tried to know. Yeah. All right, I could take you in right now. In any case, I'll have to make out a report. Now, whatever happens depends on the cooperation we get from this young lady. First of all, the license. All right, now get out. That stays. Now clear out while you can before I change my mind. Hey! Every time I see you, I'm going over you. And you better not be carrying another one. I won't say anything. No, just no, don't tell me that. You wouldn't dob an old friend in, would you? Would you? No, you won't say anything. Flaming chick to be seen anyway. On your right. All clear? Move! I'm asking for you, mate. Here's a bag. <laughs> He's a beauty when he gets going, that brother of yours. Yeah, well, he'll have to wait. We're going. Bloody near daylight. Oh, come on, don't give us a... I've got to get up early in the morning. you call us when you first saw the body thrown out of the car? I was going to, but whoever they dumped was moving about and I thought they might just be drunk. No, you're not so sure? No, not really. Five hours later. Well, it doesn't look as if she's in. Shall we have a look? I've got a key. It's all right, she gave me one just in case. Mary! Mary, love! Are you all right? Mrs. Larkins. Is she a diabetic or something? No. No, I don't think so. Mrs. Larkins? Mrs. Larkins, can you hear me? Hey, Dave. Mrs. B. Hey. Copy her on page 20. <laughs> oh. What do you want? What are you and Arthur doing tonight? Don't know. Same as last night? Oh, don't be funny. We're for the high jump if that bitch talks. Oh, don't be stupid. It's pitch dark. Cool, get a load of that. 
Couldn't see a thing. Yeah, maybe. You got a fag? When are you going to get a job? Got the car tonight? Should have. Why? I thought we might go down to the beach. All this hot weather, the birds would be all over the place. It's all you think about, isn't it? You're too right. <laughs> Should be a bit younger this time. Police officer, I'd like you to come down the station and answer a few questions. What about? Do you know Miss Shepard? Never heard of her. What about the old lady last Sunday? I know nothing about her. Funny. Your two mates know about her. You keep away from me. against the guy that beat up our teacher, so we took our own action. Against the whole of Matlock RSL? Why don't you put on your RSL badge and be done with it? You've got something against return, man? Yeah. And I'll tell you something. I wish I'd have thought of throwing that paint over that stupid statue. Somebody beat me to it. Uh, you might be telling the truth, but if you'd done it, you wouldn't have the guts to admit it. I should get beaten up more often. Well, it seems to have sparked your creative fire at last. We were expecting you back for days. Uh, reports of my death were grossly exaggerated. <laughs> yes, yeah, not bad at all. I only wish I could be as happy with your extracurricular activities of last night. Mini RSL. Ted, I'm afraid that without something like an anti-war movement, you would still be scuffling with police and hurling bricks through windows. You're an amiable larrikin who has assumed the imprimatur of rebellion. No, I don't think... But I wish you'd been with me yesterday when I had my brush with Mr. Dawes. <laughs> now be a love and put these up for me, will you? Well, he's not there anymore. The saintly Mr. Marshall has gone to his just reward. Now, I may be just an amiable larrikin, Kevin, but I'll tell you something. We're going to shake this crummy town until it rattles. This is one Anzac day that I'll never forget. What was it like on the farm? Better than Pentridge? Yeah. Well, at least you didn't have to shave. What's wrong? Not in the taxi. I still sound so happy with the Gabriel again. How's Ronnie? He's fine. I called at your house earlier this morning to talk to your wife. She wasn't there. I was picking you up. What's there to talk about? The boy's in illegal custody. Why wasn't something done last night? In cases like this, we have to check all the aspects before taking action. A child belongs to its mother. There are no two ways about it. Mr. Turner, Sergeant Vickers would like a word with you. Well, I don't know whether, whether I can make it. We've got to pick uh, Ronnie up after school. Well, you've got half an hour to spare. I told Miss Hayes we'd be at her place at 3.45. And you realize the child will mean added responsibility. Yes, sir, but uh, well, it's good to have a kid around. Got any plans about a job? Yeah, I, I did carpentry while I was inside, and the uh, prisoner's aid bloke gave me a few names and addresses. I'll get on to it first thing Monday. Well, let's know if you strike any difficulties. Thanks, Mr. Vickers. Who's your parole officer? Mr. White. We had a long chat, and, uh, well, I reckon I can make a go of it this time. Right. Well, best of luck, Turner. Thanks, Mr. Vickers. I'll need it. 
All yours, Miss Stewart? The stage. We have a Where's Jean? All seven runners Shopping. of this event. What are you doing here? Galloplan, Kitchen, I came to see you. Did you? What about? No Garfield spare parts? Racing right throughout nope. this afternoon. The factory in Armand Street. It happens I'll have 15,000 in a safe there this weekend. I heard a customer talk about it last night at the cafe. Did you? Yeah, he's a sales manager. He said the man who usually does the banking. He's had an accident. Can't rush a job like that. If we don't, we'll miss out. Too bad. Look, you tell me what you need. I'll get it for you. What's a safe like? Old. How do you know? One of my girls used to work at Garfield's. I got the layout from her. Can you get your hands on some jelly? Yeah. What about a car? Get anything if you pay. I'll need a cockatoo. I'll be looking out for you. You're keen. Not trying to get rid of me, are you? <laughs> Why should I? What's in it for you? I thought we'd split 50-50. And the money for the jelly and the car comes out of my share. Where do you think you were going? What are you doing here, Turner? Going for a walk with me, mate. Yeah. What's in the bag? Nothing. Open it. Let's have a look. Right, against the wall. OK, we don't want to see you hanging around here again, with or without a shopping bag. Remember, you're on parole. I'm not forgetting. The keys. Give me the keys! Break a bloody neck! You wanted me back inside! You thought you'd grab your share and get lost! You thought they'd catch me with two of them! I didn't! I didn't! You lost! You did your own! What got into you, Turner? Where's your boy? Sadik? I'm Keith Evans. From next door. I have never seen you. No, well, I, I don't live around here anymore. I'm up here on holidays. What do you want? Is Mr. Sadik at home? No. I, I heard about the trouble last night at the milk bar. Yeah, well, uh, I was wondering if I could give you a hand. If Mr. Sadik's been arrested. He hasn't. Oh. He's not here because it's his morning in town for a business. I see. Well, that's all right, then. Well, I'll be going. Mr. Evans, thank you for thinking of me. That's all right. Do you want something, Willie? No, she's right, thanks, Mr. Sadik. Why don't you come in for a moment? Where'd you learn to speak English? In Melbourne. Oh, yeah. I, I went to school there for three years. Have you got any friends? H how do you mean? Well, do you ever get visiting? Oh, no, I never go out. Yeah, well, uh, I'd better be going. You will want to get on with your washing? Well, want is the wrong word. You should ask your husband to buy a washing machine. I have one. <laughs> Why don't you use it? It's not working. What's the matter with it? Oh, I don't know. Would your husband try to fix it? No. Well, would you like me to have a look at it? Well, if you like. OK. Do you want some advice? No. Just stay away from that lot. Leave it to us. Mr. Sedek? Is that your car outside? Yeah. It is in the way. I I'm sorry, Pardon. I'll move it. This is Mr. Evans from next door. What do you want? Nothing. Uh, Mr. Evans told police kept you last night. And so he comes here to you, Out huh? Door. It's all right, Mr. Sedek. Well, here is your money. What is that for? Uh, Mr. Evans repairs my washing machine. There wasn't much wrong with it in the first place. You should mind your own business. Now, look, Mr. Sedek. Get Sadek. out of my house. Do not have Abdul. You keep to your side of the fence, eh? Right you are. There are plenty of Australian girls around here. You go to them, you keep away from my wife. Now, just a minute. This is my property, and if you trespass again, I shoot you. Now, Emma. Oh, I needed some water. Camioya. Dirty river water. I can't use it for cooking. Yeah, just talking to the wife. Maybe it won't be too long fixing that tank of yours. 
Water can get pretty scarce around here. Not for crying out loud. My wife will not come here again. Oh, Have some sense, Mr. Sardik. Take your hands off my son. You hit that girl and see what happens to you. I mean it, Sardik. And tomorrow I shall leave my husband. Will you tell him? Where will you go? Melbourne, to my sister. No, he'll find you there. I have nowhere else to go. I'll take it to my aunt's. You are very good to me. A little surprise here tonight. A little surprise, especially on this auspicious occasion. <laughs> especially for me, old mate Paxton here. Might teach him a few tricks you'll find Ooh, useful. Yeah. <laughs> hey, someone get you know the screen. Charlie, fix the projector. What sort of surprise is this going to be? Just wait and see. This will be tomorrow. <laughs> Strike, where did you get this stuff from? Never you mind, just watch and learn. What every young man should know. <laughs> Pornographic film. I dropped in with your wedding present. Now, where did the film come from? Now, Mr. Peters, you wouldn't want a bloke to dob his mates in, though, would you? Depends on who you call mates. You're supposed to be John's. Meaning what? You organised the party. Did you get the film, too? <laughs> no comment. When's the wedding, John? Next week. I hope you don't have to come back from your honeymoon. The case should be before the magistrate about then. What are you trying to pull, Peters? So we appear before a magistrate, we get a fine at the most. Don't let him kid you. Look great in the papers, won't it? Helen's friends will get a lot of laughs. <sighs> Forget it, Johnny. That'll make sure it doesn't get into the papers. Now listen, Roach. I've got a fair idea who got that film. You're not trying to protect your mates. You're trying to cover up for yourself. Oh, so now it's time for the tough cop act, is it? You're starting to annoy me, Roach. Super Dad does it again. Go on, get in. It appears I'm gaining not only a son-in-law, but another headache. Where to now? The solicitors? Home, Holbrook. I want to know. Who arranged for that film? You or John? That it wasn't either of us. One of the other fellas brought it along and... Well, we couldn't very well jump up and shout perv, could we? Oh, well, I have no more of that sort of talk, thank you. Oh, can we cut the Righteous Parent Act? I've taken about enough of it. Well, that's all you've ever done, taken. Holding your hand out every week for your allowance. Allowance? Is that what you call it? I wouldn't keep a man in cigarettes. Well, let's see how you get on without it for a while. All right, then. Stick your buddy Lawrence. And you precious grog with it. Now, where are you going? Out. But don't worry, I'll be back. That I don't doubt. Miss Marriott? Huh? I I've, uh, I've... I've got a bit of a problem. Oh? Mr. Cooper? Yeah, I mean... Hey, Brian. Some good stuff here. Your sort. Girls. Mr. Roach has got something to tell us. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's about one of the films. Go on. Well, I, I took it to a Bucks party the other night. That's what they're for, man. Did you get a good price? We were raided. The D's confiscated the film, but, 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 but they don't know where it came from. I, I didn't say anything. Are you sure? Well, he couldn't very well, could he? Brian, give me Mr. Roach's file. Mm. So pity. It was a colour film. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll pay for it, of course, but, but I haven't got very much money at the moment. Of I'd... course you'll pay for it, Mr Roach. It's just a question of how much. Well, I can't raise very much at the moment, but as exactly. soon as... You've done a good job for us in the past. This is your first mistake. Shall we say, uh... Four hundred dollars? Four hundred? Hmm. But, but that film was falling to pieces. Must be shown a thousand times. I rented it out for twenty. Well, exactly. When you consider the cost of our rental charges, four hundred dollars is a pretty generous figure. I'm not paying any four hundred. Fifty, a hundred, if you can wait. It's all right, Brian. 
I think Mr. Roach is just a little upset. I'd reconsider, Mr. Roach. Uh, consider how we'll be placed. We've got superiors, too. Four hundred's bloody impossible. I'll try and make it a hundred. I'd think it over, Mr. Roach. I really would. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'll be going then. Uh, Mr. Roach, would you mind? It's um, better for us if our distributors aren't seen coming and going too often. There's a side gate through the dark room. Yeah, sure, OK. Well, uh, I'll see you when I can. Yeah, sure, see you. Why don't you help him think it over? Mr. Roach. Our lady friend thought you might need some help. Make up your mind. That slot cutting you find. It's not used very often. Come on now, Mr. Roach. How about we get? No? Get away from me! Leave me alone! Don't roll around in the dirt, Mr. Roach. Come on. How about we get? The price is 400 bucks, Marty. You don't mind me calling you Marty, do you? Cooper? Bring Mr. Roach in now. Oh, that's not over, Marty. Just when we were getting acquainted. Now, how'd you do that, Marty? You got dirt all over you. Mr. Uh, Cooper has explained our price structure to you, has he? Good. I knew you'd understand. I uh, think you can use the front door this time. Oh, Mr. Roach. $400. And today. Hmm? I'll tell you another thing I hear. If you're looking for the top man of the operation around here, you're wasting your time. It's a woman. Where are you putting that money? I tell you, Montgomery, I ain't finished! Grab the pot, please. Coming up. How about yourself? Oh, tough. Buy your blokes a bit? Yeah. Yeah? Righto. Passing through. Montgomery ain't finished. Oh, no, I ain't finished. Uh, actually, I think I'll be around for quite some time, uh, if I can get a room. Oh, I might be able to fix you up. Are you with the wolf firm, mate? Wolf firm? No bloody wolf firm taking over my property. There you go, Monty. Montgomery ain't finished. No bloody Look, fear. Look, nobody said you are, mate. Tell you I'm... All right, now, come on, drink your beer. Well, all right, shut up about it. He's had a hard time. Bloody wolf firms. Yeah, looks as though everyone has. Insurance investigator? No, I'm uh, doing a newspaper story. I'm a reporter. Bugger all to report here, mate. Oh, I don't know. You're a king-size drought, haven't you? Let me give you a word of advice, son. I'm Stan Bacon, Jim Bacon's brother. Now, if you're thinking of writing up about the drought, forget it. Some galah's been doing it already in the Sunday papers. Death of a town. Never been further west than bloody Footscray. What did you say your name was? Philip Henderson. Philip Henderson. So you're the bastard that's been riding this muck. Have a look at it. Philip Henderson, death of a town. Well. Oh, bloody Wolverine shouts me over here. Well, uh, do I still get that room? Upstairs. Third on the right. Thanks. He's away. That's his brother in there, and he didn't mention it to me. Yeah, well, it's, it's room number four, but there doesn't seem to be any water. Well, there won't be at this time of day. It's pumped up morning and evening. There is a drought on, you know. I am very hot and very dusty, Mrs. Bacon. 
Now look, Mrs. Bacon, this is a hotel and it is supposed to cater for guests. Now could I please have some water pumped up so I can wash this dust off? I'm sorry, but if you were to ask before you got undressed, anyone could have told you there are water restrictions. <sighs> look, there should be some water in the basin in your room. Be easier to wash in bloody beer. Yeah, it might be a bad. Just been filling our city friend in on a few of our problems. Our problems? I like to think of them as the community's problems, Mrs. Bacon. After all, drought doesn't only affect the farmers. Now, drought can be controlled. Let me give you an example. You see, if in the good years, if the farmers had bothered to put down their silage pits, they'd have been okay now. How you going, Henry? Enjoying the Saturday night festivities? Yes. So when he said to me, I'm the editor of the examiner, I said, no, you're not, Sam. I just bought it, and you're fired. <laughs> it's a good paper, the Riverdale Examiner. Now? Yes, I'm sure it is. Uh, same again? Not for me, thanks, Sam. You can't make money propping up a bar. Well, good night, all. Hey, John. Hey, and this man, Nancy. Oh! 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 oh. 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 We keep walking. I couldn't oh. wait. Oh. Oh. I went. Susie, like I Susie. Hey, stop! Oh, Back up a bit. I don't know. We've got to get some petrol on quick. But Mika. Couldn't we have stopped somewhere out of town? Should be right. Just let me do the talking. Hi. Two dollars worth of super, thanks. Right. How was the party? Oh, not bad. I just want a word with you when you're finished. Sure, won't be sick. Everything else okay? Yes, fine, thanks. Who are they? I bought some hamburgers last night. What are we going to do then? We'll go someplace quiet, we'll have a drink and a rest, and then we'll decide what to do. Where's Rod and Susie? Ah, uh, you've gone out. Said they're going to take a look around. <coughs> Mick, well, you're a nice boy. You're educated. Well, you should stop. Stop what? 
this drinking and, and parties. It just occurred to me. Well, one day you'll have to find a job and go back to normal. Because that's what people do. Is it? Well, I know a lot of boys have been in Vietnam and now they're back at their jobs. What would you know about it? I'm sorry, Mick. I'm scared. Scared of what? That man could be dead, you know. What man? The man you shot this morning. No, I don't think so. It was an accident. It was, but... Well, it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been shooting that gun and doing all the silly things you did. All right, woman, so I'm a stupid bum. I didn't say that. No, I'm a stupid bum who likes to drink and shoot at road signs and, and hates to work. So what? Look. Back there, the thing to do was to get drunk and kill people. Now, all of a sudden, I've got to work for a living and to earn a little money to marry a little woman and buy a little brick for near house. No thanks. A war leaves scars here. They take a long time to heal. <laughs> you just don't know what I've been through. You're making a lot of fuss, you know. It's a great pity. You student? You don't have to be a student to resent petty authority. What do you do? I paint. And odd jobs when I can get them. What? Houses? Landscapes. You live with your parents? No, they've got a property up at... He's been charged, Sergeant. Yeah, I know, but not searched. And then I think we'll find a license, right? But failing there, we'll check the registration of your motorcycle. Get your name and address that way. So you can't win, can you? Now get your license out, lad, and stop wasting my time. Philip Reed, 73, Colchester Grove, Malvern. Correct name and address? Yes, sir. All right, take him away. Will I still be locked up? Senior Dwyer's arresting officer, Senior Sergeant McLeod's in charge of the watch house. Cry on their shoulders. You go upstairs and bathe that wrist. I'll be right up. You here again? Ah, uh, yes, I was just looking for Horace, but everyone seems to be out. Uh, sure you can manage? <laughs> Do you mind knocking? They're back in that bloody stuff with me. I reckon we got a problem. <laughs> I'm damn sure we got a problem. I said Ryan, bloke. He was here the other night, right after the old lady fell down the stairs. He was here yesterday and he was here again today while we were out. I've asked Horace about him. He's a detective. A cop? Well, a private inquiry agent. Still, things are warming up a little. It might be a good idea if we speed up the program. Oh, forget it. I'm out as of now. You'll get out when I let you. Now, you listen to me. I've devoted nearly a year of my life to this scheme. Mixing with drunks and deadbeats. Feeding them soup, finding them clothes. Having to cope with that old idiot that runs this place. Every time I have to touch one of those foul-smelling hobos, I nearly throw up. There's only one thing that's kept me going. 
And that's the fact that pretty soon now, I'll be able to get out, to get away, and I'll have enough to live La Dolce Vita for some time. And where does that leave me? It leaves you with your cut, free to make your own arrangements. It's the old lady that's caused all this trouble. She was onto us. I reckon she was trying to phone Possibly. Ryan that... Possibly. But one thing's equally clear, and that's that Ryan has only got his suspicions. And if we can keep it that way for just a little while longer, we'll be laughing. Okay. Okay. I recognize the car, mate. You trying to warn him? Huh? No. Not much. <laughs> Got back to find him coming out of your room. And he had this on him. So what do we do now, Brother Trevor? Okay, we'll have to take off. Good enough anyway. Another good day today. It's full of checks and cash. What about him? Uh, is there somewhere we can dump him? Get him out of action for a couple of days while we get clear? Yeah, I know a place. We'll have to be quick, though. All right, out. Come on. Don't tempt me. I'd love to put one of these in you. Where did you acquire all the scruples? Didn't seem to worry you with Elsie, or don't old women count? That was an accident. Anyway, she was a stupid old bag. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I thought you ought to know. You're supposed to be watching the girl. It's OK, the nurse is there. Still? She had to come back. Why? Because the girl... Come on, I'll be out for a few hours, Roller. Right, you're right, Mr. Ward. Aren't you supposed to be? It's all right, Mr. Ward. I've got that situation well covered. No developments about Jacob? Not yet. Ryan, his greasy little mate, are working for the girl. They've been round to a flat twice and they've got a girl planted there. Well, I thought you ought to know what's going on. Yeah. I wonder how much Ryan knows about all this. Well, he seems to be giving it plenty of attention. And, would you know, he and Mr. Ward kind of have an understanding, don't they? Yeah, if Ryan does know anything about this, and he gets on ward with it. Hmm, could be uh, kind of embarrassing for you, couldn't it? <laughs> well, oh. What is this? You don't come here unless I tell you. I want to talk with you. Oh, for God's sake, Rollo, I can't keep this up. I can't. Please get me off the hook. Please, Rollo. Sit down. Get him a drink. <laughs> hey, you want to get yourself in shape, Doc? There's no time to go to pieces. It's too high. The price is too high. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about all the things I've done for you people. The years of humiliation. I've helped you to deceive, to corrupt, to pervert. I saw that girl this morning. I've seen what we've done to her. Well, I'm finished with it. Now get a slug of that into you and get out of here. And don't give me any more of your sermons. You sold out, Doc, years ago. The only way you're going to stay in circulation is by jumping when I say jump, all right? <laughs> Have a drink, Doc.
Let him go. We've got bigger worries. I want to find out if Ryan's onto anything. If he is, he can hurt us. He can screw it up with the girl, with Jacob, and with Mr. Wood. Get Sam. Find an opportunity to nose around Ryan's apartment. Get into his files. See what he knows. Sure. We've got three years invested in this little exercise. One bad fumble now, we can still lose the lot. Brother! That's hardly me. Bloody well, knock. Listen, Ward's looking everywhere for you. And Ryan turned up at the club. All the more reason to stay out of circulation, isn't it? Well, things are getting out of hand. People are getting out of hand! Now, both of you, settle down! Well, pretty soon, Jacob's going to make his move to collect the girl. Then we collect him, right? Then, unfortunately, he gets shot trying to escape. Now, that's what's going to happen. And that way, Ward's never going to be any the wiser, right? Tell her to go back to the flat. She's going to expect a big slice of the action from now on, after what she's done. Well, she can go to hell. After we get rid of Jacob and the girl, we won't need her anymore, for anything. Hello, Jacob. All right, Ryan, stay right there. Okay, get rid of that gun. Now! All right, now we're going down to our car. You're going to stay right out of it, all right? Funny cattle women, you never know when you got them. You know, one minute you're sweet. Listen, mate, he wants his bike back first thing tomorrow. That's why we're working Sunday. Now shut up talking about your bird and get on with it. Uh -huh. Sir, the bloody wants your lordship. Pigs. G'day, what's your problem? Mr. Barry Fielding? Yeah. Mm, your dad said you might be here. You must be Mr. Riley. Yeah. We'd like to ask a few questions about Heather Morton. It's all right, mate, she's over 16. She was 17. Yeah, I never touched her. So what's it to you anyway? She's dead. Murdered. Jack. She was all right this morning at the rink. When did you last see her, Barry? Um, just before hockey practice. What time would that have been? Uh, about 11. Yeah, that's right, I was with him. What time did you leave the rink? Oh, I don't know. One, quarter past maybe. What about you, uh, Mr. Riley? Same time. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. What was your relationship with Heather Barry? Just friends. We heard it was a little bit more than that. Oh, well, we went steady for a few weeks, that's all. Well, we'd like you to come back to Russell Street with us. He doesn't have to go. No, it's just routine. Now, we have to learn all we can about Heather. Uh, friends, habits, things like that. Oh, yeah, that'll be okay. Good lad. Watch it, mate. Don't, don't open your mouth too wide. Yeah. Don't trust him. Now I know where I've seen you before. We've never met. Yes, we have. There's a mug like you in every watch house. Coffee, love. Yeah. You'll get cold. All right. Heard about that murder on the wireless. Oh, Heather Morton. Only 17, they said. Wasn't that the girl Barry was going with? Hmm. It's too odd. She was, wasn't she? What? Barry's girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, shocking thing to happen to a young girl like that. I bet Barry's upset. No, it made his day. Oh, don't be smart. What'd you expect? I only asked, didn't I? Well, I only told you, didn't I? What's up with you? Nothing. Oh, no, you're carrying on like a raw prawn. All right. So Heather got herself murdered. She was Barry's bird. So we're going to have wall-to-wall -wall fuzz till they get the bloke that done it. Oh, you don't have to worry, love. You've been straight for two years now. That don't make any difference to the fuzz. But they can't tie you into it. No. Bunny, you wrote her letters. You're joking. I didn't even like her. Why? She was a bitch. Most of the kids at the rink, they're good kids. But she was a regular bloody nympho. How do you know? Everyone knew. Did you have her on? Wouldn't touch her with yours. Why? Well, she's a slut. Never knew where she'd been. 
You hated her. I didn't care enough about her one way or the other to hate her. But you didn't like her. Yeah, well, she was a troublemaker. Did she make trouble for you? No, not for me, no. Kids at the rink. She got a couple of them into trouble with, uh, with their parents. She used to like to talk about her triumphs. We have a witness who saw you leave the ice rink soon after Heather. No. Yeah. No, no one saw me. They were watching... They were watching the hockey. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm a thief and a liar. I've been a crim most of my life. I've never had no middle-class security. I was brought up in an orphanage. For as long as I can remember, I've had to look out for myself. I've always played it straight. And I copped it sweet, and I got into the slot when I bet it coming. Three meals a day and no worries. I woke up to myself and I met Gwen. And I kept out of trouble now for nearly two years. Keep going, you're breaking my heart. Now listen, Lawson. Mr. Lawson. Mr. Lawson. I've, I've done some things in me time. But I've never had no bar of violence, never. I don't even beat me wife. Okay, Riley, I'll buy that. There's no violence on your record so far. How do you account for the imprint of your front tire being found in soft ground behind some bushes near Heather? Rawson counsels the talk of Melbourne, Lassiter. Ever since you've been mayor, there's been trouble. Now, don't come that with me, sugar. I remember when you was mayor of Garingbush. <laughs> all of them in bloody Renfrey, you still got your hand out all over the place. I know where to draw the line, that's the difference. I've got some discretion. No one can go on as you have without stirring up the right payers. And take the roads for a start. Yeah, I got caught in a pothole last week, nearly broke me bloody axle. The whole place is looking like a shambles. And there've been complaints about fake tenders for council contracts, bribery, corruption. Rigged ballots at the last elections. Well, now I know more about that than you do. Well, it's all over now. We're dropping him. We're taking you off the council. And who are you going to put in me place? It's neither here nor there. Nice way to treat your old friends. My father worked for you, you remember? Yeah. He couldn't keep his fingers out of the till either. I'm sick of people that haven't got any sense. I won't be dropped, Jack. I might have a few things to say about you, about you and the Ralston Council. I wouldn't try it, Colin. I can sort out your kind with one hand tied behind my back. Who's he? A friend. Business friend? Buyer from Sydney. Have you checked him out? We used to work together. All right, all right. Take it shirty. Come on, let's meet him. Don't know what's keeping him. We got out two hours ago. Well, you know Clancy. He'll show. I don't need this. What am I doing here? That's what I want to know. Because you're in with us, sweetie. We'd hate for you to think that we were conning you. I can still do without it. Your pants are getting hot. What do you mean? Now she can't wait to get back to a new boyfriend. Boyfriend? What boyfriend? Now she's latched herself onto some mug, a buyer from Sydney. He's not a mug. Have you checked him out? Checkouts. That's all you two can think about. You've got a man working on it at the moment. He's got access to police records in Sydney. We should get a reply sometime today. You can knock off bitching, sweetie. You've got as much to gain out of this as we have. Are you going to whinge over the profits? And the fact you'll have your own private little supply, junkie. Don't, Larry. Well, keep your mouth shut. Tell me a bit about yourself, Gary. You came down here from Sydney, right? Don't think it's any of your business, mate. All this is my business, friend. If anything comes along to threaten that business, do you understand? Think I'm a threat? Gary Dawson, age 25, one-time male model, moved to Sydney three years ago and was later arrested for possession of narcotics. Came into a large sum of money... All right, so you do your homework. Best is yet to come. Came into a large sum of money mainly through prostitution. Dawson is a known drug pusher at the moment. Whereabouts unknown. Wanted by the police in New South. Nice friend you've got there, Sandra. How'd you get that information? 
We've got our ways. Police records aren't that hard to get hold of, if you know the ropes. Now, we've got things to talk about. I don't play games, Gary. Sandy will tell you that herself. If you do what I say now, the cops will never find out from me where you are. Otherwise... Otherwise, I find myself behind cold, grey walls. Long Bay. You're a bastard. You shut your mouth, Junkie. Do we understand each other, Gary? I make the pickup. What makes you think I might rip you off? Because I'll be there in the background to make sure things go smoothly. I wouldn't advise any silly moves on your part. When and where? Nice try, Gary. No, I think we'll leave that till later. I'd hate to think of you going independent. Got a little uptight, Gary. Anything the matter? It's just a bit warm. I'm getting warmer. Ever use one of these? Once or twice? Well, you might have to tomorrow. The bloke we had to make the pickup got himself busted. Now, I'm not saying there'll be any trouble. We have to be prepared for any emergency. You're trusting me with this? Well, we have to put our trust somewhere. Hey, Sandy. This is ridiculous. We'll all end up getting caught. I think we'll just have to be a bit careful. Hey, come on, relax. I'll park the car back there. If it looks like a rip-off, I'll be there to back you up. Yep. Pigs. about? Oh, I'm gonna love you. Drug smuggling. Now turn around, get your hands in the car and your legs apart. I haven't got any drugs. Have a look in the car. I haven't got any drugs. Clancy's told us the whole story. Clancy? Who the hell's Clancy? It'll all come back to you as soon as you see him. How'd it go? We got this one. The police launch picked up another two in a boat. How's Gary? We haven't got a clue. Gary who? <laughs> Frank reckons Gary's gone over. To the other side? But why not? To a lot of money? Gary who? Apparently they don't know our Gary. That'll be him now. Come on. I'm Peter Galbraith. Oh, the solicitor. Oh, come in. Thank you. Edmund told me to expect you. I, uh, I must say I'm impressed. Do you always make house calls? Only for very special customers. Now, my father thought it'd make it easier for you than dragging you all the way into town. Well, in that case, I think we should have a drink. Or would you rather have coffee? Oh, uh, no, no. A uh, whiskey would be fine. Thank you. Oh, I'm pleasantly surprised to see you. I thought being a friend of Mr. Elliot Smith's, you'd be a little old lady with a small dog. And I thought most solicitors were mousy little men with glasses. Well, we all make mistakes. As you probably know, my husband and I were separated some time before he died. I'm afraid I don't know where to begin with the paperwork. Well, it all looks a little complicated to begin with, but once you know what you're doing, it's all fairly straightforward. What a nice bedside manner you've got. Yes, it comes in handy. Um, by the way, your fee. Mr. Elliot Smith's taking care of that. I wasn't sure. Yes. The red carpet treatment. And send the bill to him. You must mean quite a lot to him. I suppose I must. I hope when I am old and wealthy like he is, that I'll have someone like you to uh, lighten my declining years. That sounds terrible. I'm sorry, I meant it as a compliment. Did it backfire? Just a bit. Well, I was half hoping to find out whether it would be in order to ask you out for a drink sometime, or whether your time was um, fully occupied. No, my time is not fully occupied in that sense. Good. No, he's not.
Do you know, we've been invited to dinner tomorrow night. I'll get it. It'll be best if you go straight there, because I'll have to be a little late. Yes, I would. Sister Clark. Oh, um... I won't be too late. Is Mrs. McKenna at home? Is that all right? Well, she's just on the phone at the uh, moment. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Edmund. There's someone at the door. I have to go. Bye. Mr. Galbraith. Mr. McKenna. Um, I wasn't expecting you this afternoon. Uh, no. Well, I had some urgent papers for you to sign. Well, please come in. I left my briefcase in the car. Um, I won't be long. Your father sent him to me. Really? Very dynamic. Big future ahead, they say. That will slow him down if he keeps forgetting his briefcase. All right, upstairs. But take your time about telling the truth. We're in no hurry. I've never been in Wattle Street, honest. Got a cigarette? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're a bit strong. Mm-hmm. Foreign jobs. You can buy them here. Only the filter. They're plain. So I've been overseas lately. When did you get back? About a week ago. About nothing. You're not going to put us to the trouble of going to the airlines. When did you get back? 16 days ago. That's a hell of a long week. Two days before the first reported prowler. Coincidence. Well, I suppose it's a coincidence we found one of these cigarette butts near a house in Wattle Street. Well, I'm not the only person who's been overseas lately. Then explain the cellophane wrapping we found with the butt. Got your fingerprints on it. Well, yeah, I, I was in Wattle Street a couple of days ago. I've got a friend that lives out in that area, and, and I couldn't find his house. And I um, knocked on the door of this house to ask directions, and um, I, I lit up a cigarette while I was waiting, because there was nobody at home, you see. And, uh, but that, that was in broad daylight. I mean, I'm not a prowler. Eight out of ten for ingenuity. Now, let's go back to the beginning and try for ten out of ten for honesty. Yeah, Mrs Morgan, well, would you move slowly along the line and see if the person you saw in the property next to yours on the night before last is present, please? There's the man, Sergeant. That's him. Well, I was going to plead guilty anyway. I only did it for a lark. Well, I hope you've learned your lesson. Yeah. A mate of mine bet me that I couldn't go prowling around the neighbourhood without getting caught. <laughs> Who was your mate? Oh, come on. Now, look, I've already pleaded guilty. I'm not going to dob my mate in as well. So what happens to me now? You've got two choices. You can apply for bail and then appear in court when your case is called. Well, how long will that take? Three, maybe six months. What's my other option? You can be held here overnight and then appear before a magistrate and be dealt with in the morning. I'll do that. Right, fix him up. All right, come on. <clears throat> Lost your bet, didn't you? Well, it's only five bucks. Get out of here. Hey, you. Come over here. you'd learn to shoot straight. You gave me a hard time in that lineup. I thought you'd double cross me. Once I was sure you'd get off the bomb, I thought that was the best way out. We're back to where we started. Well, come up with another good idea. Now shut up. Kiss me.
thought you'd help me get what I wanted, that's all. You can't mean that. Can't I? I don't think you know what you're saying. I know exactly what I'm saying. I thought you'd be useful to me. You weren't. You couldn't carry anything through. Even Warwick's got more strength than you. Kim. Look, just understand this. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm staying right here. Thank God. Get out. I wish I could say something, or do something. You need a magic wand. When did he leave? Yesterday. I suppose there's no chance that no. he might... No, he's talking about going back to England. I thought Roger really liked Australia. He's been here long enough. Eight years. That long? Mm. I didn't realize. Yes, it's been quite a while. But like all good things, it was good, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, I suppose it's really rather like a divorce. Yes, exactly the same. Though not many people would see it that way. Well, it seems to be a bad time all round at the moment. I mean, just look at the mess the world's in. Watergate, the Middle East, the energy crisis. God knows what. Yes, I suppose my problems are fairly insignificant. Oh, don't be oversensitive. I didn't mean that. What then? Just... <laughs> I know how you feel. Up to a point. Well, it's confession time now, isn't it? What's the problem? Oh, nothing very significant. I'm just fed up with myself, Sam. And the thought of staying here in that flat in this hospital for the next 20 years until I retire. <laughs> it's frightening. The thought of doing something about it's more frightening still. Mm. It's not the world, is it? It's us. We're in a mess. <laughs> well, what are we going to do about it? Well, you, Melinda, will undoubtedly find a solution, something brave and pragmatic. I think I'll take the classical way out and get drunk. Alcohol's still an excellent anaesthetic, you know. Oh, you make me sound insufferably self-sufficient sometimes. Quite matron-like, in fact. No, you're a prop, Millie. Something good and strong to lean on. And I love you for it. <laughs> Yes, sir. What can I do to help you? Stay in the safe and give me the money. There's no money in there. Let's not play games, honey. I happen to know that there's thirty-seven thousand dollars in that safe, and I know you're going to get it for me. We'd like you to come down to the station with us. All right. Oh, that's really smart, guard. You can add threatening a police officer to a charge of armed robbery. That's like me to go to work on face with this, huh? You want your throat back, huh? All right, all right. Okay. Hands on the roof. Come on, move. Ah, I don't mind that. Does he have a car? Yeah, the VW. You won't find anything in there. stolen from the motel. Well, I don't know how it got into my car. Pull the other one. I don't know nothing about no robbery. Mrs. Butler will identify you as the man who robbed her. Who's Mrs. Butler? The receptionist. Come on, Frank, we know it all. Whether you confess it or not, we've got quite enough evidence to charge you. Armed robbery and demanding money with menace. I didn't menace no one. What about your threats to Mrs. Butler's son? I don't know Mrs. Butler, and I've never met a son. Oh, 
Oh, that's not what Bernice said. You leave her out of this. Oh, was she in it, Frank? She and her boyfriend? I know nothing about it. And neither do I. Look, it's obvious you planned it together. No way. So it was all the boy's idea, was it? <laughs> Richie, Jesus, he wouldn't have the guts to be able to... Now, come on, stop wasting our time and your time and tell us the truth. <sighs> all right, I'll cop a sweet. But I did it on my own. All right, you've read both copies, you agree they're correct. Sign the bottom of each page. I'm not saying nothing. Keep it up, son. You'll be the star of J Division for about seven years. Make sure he's wrapped up nice and warm for the night. Come on. Thank you, Sally. Welcome to Wentworth, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like you to meet two of my senior officers, Miss Bennett and Mrs. Jackson. Hello. How do you do? Sit down, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, I'd rather stand if that's all the same, ma'am. I'm sure you'll find it slightly different working here than at Pentridge. We're a smaller detention centre and we like to make things as flexible as possible. So I've been told, ma'am. I uh, wonder if you wouldn't mind calling me Mrs. Davidson. Sorry, Mrs. Davidson. I guess I've been too long in the army. Well, perhaps if I tell you briefly how we operate... Yes, I'd rather see the operation for myself, if that's all the same, ma'am. Yes. Miss Jackson, look out! idea at all why your husband would try to force you out of the prison? No, I don't, Mrs. Davidson. He went to great pains to set it up. There must have been a reason. Maybe he missed me. Why don't we back home? Come on now, Martin. You're no Helena Troy. And what about you, Joyce? Don't you want to be back home? They got all the gin on me. Be picked up again in no time, then I'd really be stuck in here. Oh, come on, Martin. What's the real reason? Did you have any idea your husband would attempt such a thing? No. Well, he did threaten to come back and get me out, but I didn't believe him. Yeah, but why? Why does he want you out of here? I don't know. Well, if we can't find a reason for kidnapping, then we must presume it was an attempted escape. Oh, bleeding hell it was. You know the penalties for attempted escape, don't you, Martin? It was his idea, not mine. You can't get me for that. Harry Martin came to see you twice on the same day, is that correct? Yes. Well, I suggest the first time was to arrange the time and place of an escape. The second was to put it into action. That's not true. You're lying, Martin. I had nothing to do with an escape. Then prove it, Joyce. Tell us why your husband should want to kidnap you. I tell you, I don't know why. He pulled a job, didn't he? No. He's been in and out of the clink for years for robbery. So what? Well, that's his style, isn't it? Armed robbery. That's got nothing to do with me. Oh, yes, it has. He pulled a big one. And this time, the only mistake he made was you. Somehow, you got hold of the money and started spending it. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? I've got your charge sheet here. It reads, sentenced to six months for receiving stolen goods, accessory after the fact of an armed robbery. Still don't know what I'm talking about. That doesn't mean you've anything. You've got something on your husband, haven't you, Joyce? No. Joyce? Somehow you've stashed the money away and you won't tell him where it is. So he figures he's going to spring you out of here and then bash it out of you. No, 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 I keep telling you I don't know anything about it. Now, why don't you just leave me alone? That'll be all, Mr. Fletcher. Miss Bennett, take Martin back to her cell. Oh, but Mrs. Davidson, we're just Do beginning... Do as I say, Miss Bennett. We nearly cracked her. I reckon another go in an hour's time and she'll be spilling the lot. There's no need for that sort of technique here, Mr. Fletcher. This is a women's prison, not a concentration camp. I hardly recognize you. Do you like it? You look great. What are you going to have? Scotch and dry, thanks. Uh, scotch and dry, neither of the same, thanks. How's your family? They're good. They're good. Maddie's as right as rain. But then he always is when I'm around. By the way, I've decided to take your good advice. 
What advice? About spending more time with my kids. We're going on a holiday up in the Barrier Reef for a couple of weeks. Oh, that should be very nice, sir. I hope it does some good. Yeah, yes, yeah, so do I. By the way, I appreciate your concern. I mean, he is my kid, not yours. Thanks. Underneath that grey surge, there beats a heart of gold. Cheers. Does Leela mind? Mind? No, of course not. Why should she? Well, I suppose any woman would appreciate getting away from the kids once in a while. Oh, she's hardly getting away from them. I mean, she is coming with us. So. Fletcher? Jimmy? Jeff Butler? Jeff? <laughs> well, where'd you spring from? Oh, here and there. How are you? Not bad, old son. Not bad. How are you? Never better. You all right? He's all right. Did you do that? Well, you know how it is, mate. Anything broken? It's just bruises. Don't worry, the police are on their way. Come on, Mick. Now, just where do you think you're going? Out. Mick? Sorry, fella. No way. Put it down, Jeff. No way, mate. You're gonna have to take it from me. Come on. Come on, have a go. You were top dog in your division and all that? Or have you gone soft working with a bunch of women? <laughs> I'd attack if I wanted to, you know, Jeff. Like you said, top dog. Yeah. You're slipping, Jeff. You left yourself wide open. on the operating table. The kids are dead. She rang me the day before she died. Said you'd left her for another woman. I should never, ever have allowed you around my daughter, Sergeant. We here commit the body of our dear sister, Lila, to the ground. Besides, I reckon I did you a favor. That Leela always was a whining bitch and nobody had missed those kids. And this is where you get yours. Fletcher, you all right? Jim Fletcher. Sarah Forrest. Hi. Uh, damn. Jim. Mm. Do you have a bathrobe? Mm-hmm, in the wardrobe. The only ones who know about our relationship. And for your sake, they better state that thing. Why can't everyone mind their own business? We are past tense. Yes, we're past. President doesn't matter. The department doesn't like officer inmate association of any description. It's a pity they don't feel that way about Barnhurst. I don't want the women giving Mrs. Davidson any excuse for sending you back there. They won't 
be asking you for any favors, if that's what you're worried about. And they're not likely to go talking to the screws. Mr. Fletcher, I'm sending a report to the department suggesting that Nolan be transferred. Oh, there's no need to worry. The only reason I've given is that I consider her to be a threat to security, inciting the women to follow in her footsteps. Rubbish. What are you really driving at? I think I've been in this job long enough to rely on my intuitions about certain situations. Does Mrs. Davidson know about this? I've discussed it with her, but because of her involvement with Nolan, she could hardly send it herself. If you've got something to say, Vera, then say it without your nasty little innuendos. For someone who's no longer interested, you're being very protective. Do you want to know the real reason why she escaped from Barnhurst? Because she was molested by a lesbian officer. Well, that's disgusting. Didn't she report it? What, her word against an officer's? At least in here, she'd be free from that sort of a threat. Wouldn't you say so, Vera? Oh, they might get proof one day when one of the inmates hangs herself because she can't stand the abuse any longer. Now, if you want to send her back to that sort of a threat, then you're the one that's going to have to live with it. I... I had no idea. No, you never do. I thought we could just get to know each other better. <laughs> is this where I'm supposed to say, uh, well, this is so sudden or something? <laughs> oh, Jim. I think you're nervous. Colleen, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you were making a pass. Well, would that be so terrible? You seem to have been in and out of here every five minutes over the past couple of days, and all we've had a chance to talk about has been Wentworth's problems. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah, maybe officially. But... And, and you're very busy. I'm not that busy. How do you think I felt hearing that you're a prisoner in here? I was only on remand. That's not the point. Others knew and I didn't. No, I have to go. I really am doing a split shift. Well, could we talk about it later? Yes, of course. Jim, I'm sorry. Hmm. Hello. The governorship of Beachmont Youth Remand Centre is coming up for grabs. Applications from suitably qualified senior prison officers are now invited. Well, surely you're not thinking of applying. Well, no, I thought I might. Well, how could you just leave our relationship and go off to the bush like that? Now, we agreed to cool it, didn't we? Yes, but... Well, you're not, and I've had enough. What do you mean? I mean it's over, Janet. I don't want to see you again. I am Deputy Governor. Any staff problem is my concern. Yes, I realise that. But this time, you are the cause of the problem. Congratulations, Jim. You've been promoted to Governor of Beachmont. <sighs> It's a matter of style, of flair, je ne sais quoi. Without it, you're a bust. You gotta come on with that style, that flair, that kiss to say son. As I told Mrs. Zabo, it's no good to rave, oh, it's a must. They say that clothes make the man if they beautifully adorn you. From cup to trousers, the legs to flowers. It's a matter of style, flair, je ne sais quoi, from Europe, so to speak. You gotta come on with that style, that flair, that kiss to say ça. As I told Vera B, the great thing about me is my style. G'day, beautiful. How about a quick one for an old mate? Wear clothes. Oh, come on, Doris. That's no way to talk to the fellow that's gonna rescue you from this dump. Last time you made me an offer like that, I got nicked. We're reopening the top hat club, Doris. It's going to be a real suave operation. So I'm looking for some girls with real class, you know, top lookers with lots of style and personality. Translated, that means you're looking for some dumb blondes who work their asses ragged in a brothel. The answer's no. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, love. He's on his way. Is it, Mrs. Kitty Everall? You were lying with Major Larry when I just popped over to see if there's anything I can do for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. And Vickers. Cyril Vickers. Remember it, Mrs. Overall. Get out of here. Remember, anything I can do, I mean it. Sure you do. That goes for you too, beautiful. Oh, drop dead, you louse.
New departure time will be 2.30. You were told we were coming? Yes, coming. How long will you be here? As long as it takes. Do you have maps? Uh, yes, I'll get them. How did you pay for it, Gina? Was there money? There was a case packed in the bedroom. There's no money. No! The place is clean now. You think she talked? So they would have been here waiting for us. Yeah. It's impossible for us now, isn't it? We improvise. Harrison? Is Harrison? Is Harrison? Who's there? I'm a friend of Gina's. She's at the shops. Oh. I brought her some dinner. That's very kind of you. Inside. Inside. They are early. They expect me out front. No, they do not. You are receiving them here. Isn't he, Edith? Are either of the uh, principals in? Uh, no, I'm afraid you've just missed the principals. Ah. But I am expecting the principals back, if you'd care to wait. They can't be very far away. No, I think not. Can I help you? If it's a job of some sort, perhaps I can help. Well, it's a private matter, actually, of a fairly delicate nature, concerning, as it does, a uh, marital relationship. I see. Uh, your own marital relationship? Frankly, yes. It hasn't been easy coming here. I won't pretend it has. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm not going to like spying on my wife. You may as well know that. It's not something that I'm comfortable with. It's not something I'd like the idea of at all. But I'm afraid my hand has been forced. I'm afraid my wife is carrying on a liaison outside the conventions of marriage. No, I'm not happy about having her followed. Does but your I'm... wife deny having... Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't discussed this with my wife. That'd be a breach of faith. No, it would put at risk that bond of trust that exists between us. Yes, I can see that it might do that. Well, there's a woman in there, a secretary or something. I don't know where they are. Look, ring her. She'll get a message to them.
we understand each other. It's, it's cool. Oh, God. I think I'm going to be sick. Cup of tea, anyone? Oh, that'd be lovely, darling. Thank you. All right. That's the last of them. You better get going before somebody else turns up. Yeah, right. You go in the back. I'll take the front. Wheels, you stay in the car and be ready, all right? Yeah, I'll be ready for the last two hours, mate. Can't we just let them drive? You're almost done. Well, what can you get that on, more soapy? No, 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 fix it. Uh, your desk clerk? Yeah. You're the bank manager of the local Pacific Bank, yeah? Yeah. Good. Because we've got business to discuss at the bank. Bank's closed today. If it's business, Mr... Um... Yeah, yeah, as, as I said, it is business. And we're going to take care of it right, right now. Today's Saturday. If I don't work on Saturday, call me on Monday. Dad! You let her go. What's going on here? Leave my wife alone. Yeah, we'll leave her alone, pal. Just as soon as you do as you're told. You don't want to hurt me, do you? Here, give us a hand. Hold the bag. Okay, you got it. Now ring your mate and tell him to get out of my house. <laughs> Not that we're well clear here. You might have some funny ideas about setting off alarms or calling the cops, mightn't you? Not when you got my wife. Well, I'm not taking any chances. After you. What the hell's he doing here? Ignore him! Just get in! Let me give you a hand, mate. Oh! Bank robbery! Call the cops! Oh. You want it? Go get it. You stupid bloody idiot! I think you've blown it, mate. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust gives us the victory. St. John the Divine tells us, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their What happened? Johnny, he was here. He was here, he was at the back. Look, he's not suddenly going to turn up now, is he? Oh, but his father's funeral. Well, how would he know about it? I mean, it wasn't exactly front page news or anything, was it? He was here. I went to speak to him, and he ran away. What, what did you think I was doing? I had chased him. He drove like a maniac. Well, doesn't that prove it? It's probably someone that had bad money or something. Don't you humour me. Your brother was here. Oh, Chris, he, his brother was at the funeral, and he won't believe me. He's been missing 20 years, Chris. He's, He's Harry's not... fraternal twin. There is a chance he could donate a kidney for Harry. Julie, that's just wishful thinking. Oh, it might be. But what if I'm right? What if it is, Johnny? What if he's still around? No, what if no, he... no, come on. Come on. Oh, I'll go back to town. Whoever this man is, he certainly has a... Uh, this is uh, Donald Cook. He owns the laboratory. His research projects have such potential. Now look at him. Would this be the research into pheromones? Uh, yes, he was working on it with his with his wife. Uh -huh. I read about it in a journal. Uh, uh, can you tell us why he's in his underwear and what the mask is about, sir? Um, well, Richard was always using himself as his own as his own test subject. Yeah, and the, the professor's wife works here too, is that right? Yes, uh, Dr. Constance Young. She she maintained her professional name. Right. Was she in the building when the murder happened? Yes, she was in her laboratory, I believe. We'll need a complete list of everyone who was here at the time, sir. Well, we're a very small operation. I can do that for you now, apart from Carl and uh, myself and, and Dr. Young. There's Dr. Edgar Travis. He's another researcher and his assistant, Zena, and um, just Rosemary Stone, Richard's secretary. And it was Miss Stone who found the body, was it, sir? <sighs> what is it, Edgar? What's, um, what's going to happen to the funding? I mean, there's bound to be a bit of a shake-up now that Worthington's gone, I suppose. 
Yes, well, the committee will have to meet to re-examine things, yes. Yeah, well, the pheromone project's not going anywhere. Not without Richard. If it's extra funding you're after, Edgar, then just put it in writing. Oh, I will. Yes. That's exactly what I will do. Thank you for your time, Donald. God knows what they think of us now. Look, they want you to be paranoid, OK? So don't buy into it. Mm? What? That media release. You laid on the grieving wife bit a bit thickly, didn't you? It's only a piece of paper. You know? I never had a chance at that funding, did I? Well, I guess this proposal doesn't matter anymore. You two had it figured out.